you may have read and heard of God's promises a thousand times, yet it appears that none of these promises are becoming a reality in your life. You feel lost, discouraged, and overwhelmed by the endless struggles. Perhaps you're watching this video, and deep down, you're on the verge of giving up on God. You're tired of believing and waiting upon Him. It's as though all your prayers are falling on deaf ears, and time is ticking, you've got to find a solution. Beloved, don't give up on God just yet. He never disappoints His own. He will come through for you if only you trust in His timing. Before we continue with the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Often, when we pray, we expect God to answer us immediately, in the exact way we desire and within our preferred time frame. We desire to receive what we want when we want it, forgetting that God operates on a different time scale. He loves and cares for us deeply, but prioritizes giving us what we truly need rather than what we merely want. He created you and me. He knows what's best for each of us. And above all, He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what will happen tomorrow if He gives you that response now. While you may be focused on the present, he sees the bigger picture. You've got to trust his judgment. You need to believe in what he's doing, that he won't intentionally cause you pain and tears. What if he is probably moving the scenes from behind to align in your favor? Do not see your period of waiting as a moment of neglect, but rather an indication that something greater is coming your way. I need you to believe this. Think about Habakkuk. He faced challenging times. He became frustrated, and in his moments of despair and anguish, he cried out to God. Yet, it seemed as if God was not responding. In those trying moments, God had to reveal a profound truth to Habakkuk. God said to him, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Habakkuk 2, 3. Beloved, will you wait for God or go your own way? Will you allow the devil to rob you of those great blessings God is preparing, or you will wait upon him? God is aware of everything going on. Or do you think that your existence is a result of mere chance? Every aspect of your life was carefully crafted out of God's plan he had already crafted this plan before creating you. Therefore, the events and circumstances unfolding in your life are not mere accidents. God has designated an appointed time for each facet of your journey. So, while you might think he is running late or might have forgotten you, God is right there, gently reminding you that it's not the right time yet. As Psalm 27, 14 reminds us, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Waiting can be challenging, whether it's in line at the grocery store or in life or something significant. We all know how it feels, especially when in a hurry. We'd rather walk in, get what we want, and move on to the next thing. But sometimes, the best things in life require patience. You might wonder why you must wait to have the desires of your heart. Does God's love imply living in frustration and desperation? The answer is no. God loves you deeply, and you shouldn't be frustrated because you have to wait. Only kids do that because they are ignorant of what is going on. Imagine your toddler politely asking you for his favorite homemade dessert because he is famished. As a parent, it is only natural for you to head into the kitchen and begin the preparations, even going the extra mile to whip up an amazing smoothie to accompany his sweet treat. However, picture the toddler repeatedly coming into the kitchen every minute, crying and accusing you of intentionally ignoring his needs and not giving him food, even after patiently explaining that you are in the process of preparing it. He continues to display this behavior. As a parent, how would you feel? Beloved, God is using this waiting period to prepare you for what lies ahead. 
During this time, he's building and shaping you for the future he has in store. Understanding this will help you wait with purpose, patience, and the right mindset. In case you do not know, doubt and anxiety only prolong the process. So what should you do while you wait? Firstly, wait with faith. Understand that God's timing is perfect and rushing ahead of his plan may lead to a crash landing. Secondly, wait on God in prayer and supplication. Go deeper in your relationship with him during this period. It will strengthen your faith and enhance your Christian experience in a new dimension. Just imagine if the toddler had volunteered to help his mom in the little way he could while she was preparing. It would have been full of fun and would have strengthened their bond. The same is applicable to you this season. Rather than focus on your requests, shift your focus to God. Lastly, as you wait for God's plan to unfold, engrave Jeremiah 29, 11 in your heart. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Make it your daily declaration and watch it happen. However, there are seven things to avoid while waiting. Number one, avoid despair. When you text a friend and don't get an instant reply, do you immediately assume the worst? Like they are dead, or they've stopped caring about you? Probably not. You understand that they might be busy or unavailable. You don't see them as less caring. If you can have this level of faith in ordinary friendships, imagine how much more you can trust God, who is all-powerful and all-knowing. He's never too busy for you. The Bible tells us, His ears are always open to our prayers, and He sees our troubles. So. Why judge him as unfaithful just because you didn't get an immediate response to your prayers or needs? Sometimes, when you pray to God, it may feel like he's not listening or your prayers are falling on deaf ears. That's when despair can creep in. Despair makes you panic and shifts your focus away from God and onto your problems. Rachel desired to bear Jacob a child. She was jealous of her sister, who had children. Genesis 30, 1, when Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So, she said to Jacob, give me children or I'll die. Sadly, her words came true and she passed away while giving birth to her second child. As you wait for God's promises to come through in your life, don't let despair get the best of you. Instead, Keep your eyes on God's goodness. Thank him for the blessings you expect and have unwavering trust in his power. Remember, if he's helped you before, he can do it again. He won't let you down. Number two, avoid undue comparison. Often, the reason some people feel depressed or tired of waiting for God's promises is that they constantly compare themselves to others who seem to have what they desire. When that person compares themselves to have what they want, the pressure they put on themselves only increases. You see, comparing yourself to someone else rarely leads to anything positive. It typically makes you feel sad and left behind. Imagine you're praying for a life partner and all your friends are married with kids or you're seeking a breakthrough job or promotion while your friends are getting deals and promotions. It can create tremendous pressure. This isn't an external pressure, but the pressure you've placed on yourself. Life is a journey, not a competition. There are no medals for getting married at 20 or becoming a CEO at 18. Even if there were medals, those who achieved them have received theirs, not yours. As long as you keep moving forward, you will reach your own place of victory and receive your reward. But you can't run effectively if you're always looking left and right. Your focus should be on your own path and where you're heading. You should be so fixated on your vision that you don't even have the time to consider what others have or don't have. Think about Olympic athletes preparing for a race. When the starting whistle blows, 
they don't check out their competitors' shoes, glance at the spectators, or compare the obstacles in their lane to those in their neighbors. They understand the power of focus. They know that victory comes when they stay in their lane and concentrate on their own race, not someone else's. Your journey with God is truly unique. What God wants to do with you is different from what he has planned for that friend you keep comparing yourself to. You're on an individual race, and no matter how close you are to someone, your journeys can't be the same. So, it's vital to focus on your own relationship with God, understand how he's working in your life, and always respond in faith. Comparing yourself to others can only hold you back. Just like different seeds have various germination periods, God made you uniquely. You're not meant to be a carbon copy of someone else, so there's really no reason to make constant comparisons a part of your life. Another thing you must avoid is impatience. Take Abraham and Sarah, for instance. They wanted a child, and despite God's promises, they grew old without a child. Sarah, out of impatience, brought Hagar to Abraham, and he agreed. When Hagar became pregnant, she started despising Sarah, and it brought undue conflict into their home. These conflicts could have been avoided if they had patiently waited for God's promise. Don't even entertain plans or suggestions that deviate from God's original plan for you. The Bible tells us to add patience to our faith, virtue, knowledge, and temperance. Your faith, virtue, knowledge, no matter how powerful, won't be effective without patience. Patience helps you walk with God as he molds you into his perfect image. It gives you the strength to trust God in the midst of life's storms and hold onto his promises until your life aligns with his divine plan. It's important to stay calm and patient while waiting. Rushing things can lead to unnecessary problems. Remember, God's delay is not a denial. It's actually a setup for you to receive even more. Don't rush ahead of God. Let patience guide you as you wait for God's perfect timing. Also, do away with doubt. Doubt can be a major roadblock during your waiting period. The Bible tells us that someone who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not ex to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Doubt can rob you of all that God has in store for you. Have faith in God, and faith is indeed what you need to receive the best from Him. Without faith, it's hard to stand firm when life gets tough. Think about the Israelites when they were trapped in the Red Sea. They couldn't see a way to cross, with mountains on either side and enemies behind. They were cornered, but Moses trusted God without a hint of doubt. He believed in God's ability to rescue them, and God did. Consider the story of Joshua and the Israelites before the walls of Jericho. Marching around a wall for seven days and then shouting sounded foolish, but they trusted without a doubt. Their faith brought that giant wall tumbling down. Remember Daniel in the lion's den? He didn't doubt God's ability to keep him safe and recall David's unwavering faith in Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Has God lost his power? Certainly not. He remains the same throughout generations and can still turn impossible situations around in ways you can't even imagine. To truly make the most of your waiting period, have faith in God. Don't wait in fear, doubt, or anxiety. Wait in faith. Furthermore, avoid grumbling and complaining. Grumbling and complaining can make a difficult situation even more challenging. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2, 14, to do all things without grumbling or arguing. This means that no matter what you're going through, avoid whining. Trust the process. Trust what you're becoming, and keep moving forward. Think about the Israelites during their journey to Canaan. They often grumbled, 
and you can see how God responded to their complaints. Sometimes, it's easy to complain about your unpaid bills, the difficulty finding a suitable job, declining health, or the common question, why me? But here's the tricky thing about complaining. While you're busy complaining, you actually feel worse about the situation, and it becomes a heavy burden. That's why Jesus invites us to come to him when we are heavy laden. Instead of holding on to the burdens you grumble about, lay them at Jesus' feet and wait for him to turn things around for you. Above all, avoid making hasty decisions. When you're feeling pressured or facing a tough situation, it's easy to make quick decisions without thinking them through. Many people have rushed into decisions they later regret because they didn't take the time to carefully consider the consequences. Hasty decisions often lack wisdom because there isn't enough time for thoughtful reflection. So, before making any important decision, pause and take a moment to think it through. Pray and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Ask yourself if your decision aligns with God's plan for you. This will help you make better choices and avoid hasty, regrettable decisions. And lastly, embrace growth. There's a story of a widow who was about to lose her two sons to creditors. She sought help from a prophet who instructed her on a way to victory. However, she needed to grow and expand her capacity first. Although she had a jar of oil, she needed many vessels for the oil to meet her needs. She had to expand her capacity by borrowing more vessels so that when the anointing for multiplication came upon the oil, it wouldn't be limited. The oil stopped flowing only when all the vessels were filled. Think about it. If she had gotten only a few vessels, she would have had much less. Some people mistakenly believe that waiting means doing nothing. They think that while they wait for God to intervene in their lives, they have no role to play in positioning themselves to receive from God. The waiting period is actually a time for growth. You're expecting something significant from God, so don't stay with your small capacity. Instead, expand your capacity, build strength and grace. Nurture your faith during this waiting period. Spend time with God in prayer, study the Bible, and meditate on His Word. Don't sit idle. Think about what you're praying and trusting God for. Can you handle it in your current state and capacity? Do you have the knowledge and grace to manage what you're asking for? If not, focus on growing. While you wait, grow. While you trust, learn. While you are patient, prepare. This way, when God's blessings arrive, you'll be qualified and ready. Remember, life is not only about reaching a destination. It's about whom you become on your journey of faith. It's about the growth and refinement you experience as you travel through life. Each moment is an opportunity to deepen your relationship with God. Even when it seems quiet and silent, God is at work, shaping you and refining your faith for the blessings that lie ahead. Our timing and God's timing may not always match, but His timing is always perfect. As you grow in faith, never give room to doubt or disbelief. Focus on your journey and avoid comparing yourself to others. God is inviting you to walk with Him on a deeper level, to let go of the ordinary and to embrace eternal life. Hold on to Him with trust and confidence, knowing that He will do things beyond what you can imagine. Even amid the silence and challenges, He works for your good and will exceed your expectations. With this assurance of faith in your heart, Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you with gratitude today. I ask for your mercy for the times I have gone my own way and failed to trust your perfect plan. Today, I open myself up to you. I commit to trusting you every day of my life, even when there is no visible evidence. I believe you are working behind the scenes carrying me through storms and challenges and holding me up with your strong hand. Lord, I pray for a strengthening of my faith. Keep me steadfast in my trust in you so I will not waver. I choose to focus on you. 
I turn away from what is wrong and fix my gaze on what is right. Father, I choose gratitude. I will be thankful for the things working in my favor and praise you instead of grumbling, questioning, or complaining. My heart will leap for joy at the work you are doing in me. I trust the process of becoming who you have designed me to be. I believe this waiting period will make me stronger and draw me closer to you. I pray for those who are weary and tired from waiting on you. Grant them strength from above. Help them not to grow weary, but mount up on wings like eagles. Thank you, gracious Father, for hearing my prayers. I offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that makes this video possible. And here is another one you might enjoy.